There are so many rules when it comes to the game of golf. Think about it, the USGA and the PGA have to anticipate very specific situations and make sure that they have rulings to cover for them. Yes, there are the more well-known rules that we see come into effect every round of every tournament, but there are so many rules that you have no idea existed. Keeping that in mind, we're going to fire through some of them right now. Here are the most bizarre golf rules ever. The air rule. If a gust of wind moves your ball, you could play it from its new position. However, if it's artificially propelled air that moves your ball, you must replace it without penalty. This is USGA rule 18-1-2. That's right, the wind is your friend, but if someone comes along with a giant fan that moves your ball, you must return it to where it started. Now, how could they even come up with this rule? The only thing I can come up with is that a player actually tried to move their ball with some sort a hand fan. The orange rule. If your ball is lodged in an orange, you cannot take relief without penalty. This is USGA rule 23 slash 10. I'm sorry, but when you say orange, you actually mean the fruit. Has this actually happened where golfers perfectly hit into an orange and got lodged in there? What happens if you don't take the penalty? Do you just hit the ball while it's still in the orange? What if the orange is still in the tree? How is this an actual rule? Staying on trend with fruits, what if your ball lands in a bunker directly in front of a half-eaten apple? What in the world would you do? Well, according to USGA rule 23-3, a half-eaten apple is considered a natural object and cannot be removed without penalty. It does not matter if there are apple trees in the vicinity or if it was left there by another golfer. These rules just keep getting more and more specific and more and more ridiculous. I love it. Hit that like button if you're enjoying this and comment down below if you've ever used any of these rules in some weird situations that you found yourself in on the golf course. The cactus rule. If your ball comes to rest next to a cactus, you may wrap an arm or a leg in a towel to protect yourself from the needles when you play your shot. But however, you cannot cover the cactus with a towel. This is USGA rule 1-2 slash 10. I mean, I know a lot of these rules are so absurd, but this one, I can't really understand. Why are you allowed to wrap yourself in the towel, but not the cactus itself? It feels like it's kind of the same thing. Who knows? Moving on to the next one. The flying insect rule. Rule 13-4C states, if the player's ball lies in a hazard, the insect is considered to be in the hazard and the player may not touch or physically remove the insect from the ball. However, if the insect is capable of moving on its own, the player may take action, such as waving their hand or club or towel to encourage the insect to move. Snakes on the golf course. Now, I've personally encountered a snake while golfing before, and I'm not ashamed to say I shrieked like a little scared child and quickly abandoned my ball and took a drop without taking a penalty because that's how I roll. But if I was a pro abiding by the USGA rules, there is a rule to cover this situation. Rule 23 slash 65. A dead snake can be treated as a loose impediment, which means you may remove it. However, a live snake is considered an outside agency, which means it cannot be moved before continuing play. I mean, if you're an amateur like me, yeah, I'm not thinking about moving the live snake either, but if you're a pro, this has to be so distracting. The water bottle rule. Now, I can't lie, after reading this rule, I thought I'm definitely going to use that when I'm playing against my friends. The USGA rule 14-3 states you cannot place a water bottle on the green and use it as a level to determine how a putt will break. I mean, I personally think if pro golfers were using water bottles as levels, I'd enjoy watching that. I think it would bring a whole new art to reading greens. Plus, some of those greens are impossible to put on anyway. Just give the golfers a break and let them use the water bottle. The spit rule. USGA rule 4-2 states you may spit on your club face before playing a shot to clean it, but not if you're going to try to reduce spin to hit a straighter shot. This is a pretty goofy rule when you scrutinize it. Will professional golfers even spit on their club face in front of an audience? Even if they did, how could someone possibly determine the ulterior motive of their action? Honestly, I can't see any PGA rule officials who would take action after seeing a golfer spit during a tournament. But if they were to take action, you have to admit that would be pretty damn entertaining. The club head falling off rule. If the club head falls off during the backswing and you complete the swing but miss the ball, it does not count as a stroke. However, if your club head falls off during your downswing and you complete the swing but miss the ball, it does count as a stroke. 
As if this game wasn't challenging enough, now we get penalized for equipment malfunctions. Now this rule may seem unrealistic at first glance, but this did happen before. It was the opening round of the 2015 Valero Texas Open. Phil Mickelson broke his 8 iron club head at impact in a bunker. The clubhouse rule. Now this one has to be my favorite on the list. If a shot ends up in the clubhouse and the clubhouse is not out of bounds, you can open a door or a window and play the next shot without penalty. This is the USGA rule 24-2B. Either this rule is a joke or someone on the committee just really wants to see some off-road golfing or some golfing street style. I don't know what you'd call it, but I cannot see a pro golfer hitting so poorly that they hit the ball directly into the clubhouse. I mean, realistically, if a tour player hit a golf ball into the clubhouse, the shot must have been at least 50 yards offline. Furthermore, who wants to hit a shot from a concrete, wooden, or ceramic floor? You're definitely damaging your golf clubs, and if you're like me, you're probably going to hit all ground first and snap your wrist in doing so. Searching for or identifying a ball covered in a hazard. So here's the situation. You hit your ball into a bunker but can't find it immediately. You think it might be buried but you can't see it. You start moving sand around and finally unearth your ball, sweeping away some of the sand to identify it. The rule states that you have to make sure you recover the ball with the sand, although you can leave a small part of the ball visible. If the ball moves, you can, at no penalty, replace it. If you hit the ball without recovering it, according to Rule 12-1B, it will cost you two strokes. Removing Morning Dew from Your Ball now, if you're one of those golfers who loves to get out early, your ball is almost always covered in that morning dew. If you're in the habit of wiping that dew off with your hands or a towel, you're actually in violation of rule 13-2. Dew wiping is a two-stroke offense. I mean, why are these rules so strict? Dew, frost, or water may be removed on the tee box before hitting the ball, but other than that, you're getting yourself a two-stroke penalty. Thanks for watching our video. If you haven't yet, drop us a like, leave us a comment, and if you're looking for more golf content, don't forget to subscribe.